<clears throat> this is Ezekiel 24 and verse 6. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose scum is therein, and whose scum is not gone out of it, bring it out piece by piece. Let no lot fall upon it. Double honest, the apostle and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations, the brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson, Jacob is not just being set free, he's being set up to rule. That's right, much to the annoyance. I don't know what the right word is. They just are beside themselves. They who, it's all the other 17 nations, our power, whose name is Yahweh, his only begotten son. It's Yahweh Shai. It's got a chosen people in the earth. And that's us, we, the children of Israel, the true children of Israel, not the gutter rats over there in our land. That's all a fraud and deception and lies. That's Esau, Edom. It's the Edomite. He said, I want you to call me the white man. There's no such thing, no such thing as a black man either. Your color is not your nationality. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's lies and deception. This scum of the whole earth is the cancer. And fire is the only thing that can get this man out. He's profane in nature. You look in Leviticus, you see where this... Uh, leprosy that this man has is clean leprosy. The only way to get rid of it is through fire, whether it's in the, in the walls of a house or on your scalp or his blonde hair, blue eyes. All oh, this is a sign of leprosy. Let's turn the page here. Ezekiel 25. And let's go from 12. Thus said Yahweh power, because that Edom had dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and have greatly offended and re revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom. Remember, this Esau, Edom. He wants to, I want you to call me white. He fights, he gets angry if you say what his true biblical nationality is. He's the Edomite in the scriptures, the source of great judgment. And it's just around the corner. And then we'll cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Timan, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people. And people say, oh, don't, you don't need to worry about that. It's the, no, he said, I'm going to use my people to exact vengeance upon this man. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. See, if it was left up to us, we'd all be marching up and down the place like these fools in the past who was set up to be all passive. They've got this man up in their churches. They worship that looks like this man. They all this long stringy hair, leprosy, blonde hair, blue eyes. That's the passivity that they've been pushing with this Roman Catholic universal bullshit that they've got up in these churches. It's a Sunday morning. So that's what's going to be going on here up in the hills in Jamaica. So if it wasn't for the Most High who's going to put his fury and his anger in his people, we'd all be trying to uh, kumbaya, uh, God is love, John 3, 16. That's what would be going on. They shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance. It's not going to be my vengeance. It's not... And nobody, we're just no. No, it's his anger and his fury. His who is Yahweh power. Because look how he signs off here. They shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God, Yahweh power. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it. Why? For the old hatred. See? It goes way back. We're going to get that in a moment. Ezekiel 28 and 2, son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, who's the modern day prince of Tyrus, is that he saw Edom. Babylon, the great America, that's his headquarters. That's where he functions from. That's where he pushes out all of their madness and 
unrighteous, unlawful decrees, degeneracy at an all time high. Thus said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am the heavenly Father. I sit in the seat of the heavenly Father, in the midst of the seas. That's amongst all the nations. He's saying, Oh, look at me, worship me. He set himself up, removed all of the images that was before him and said, oh, no, no, paint them all over so they look like me. Smash off all of their noses. Get rid of all the rest of them. Change the hair up so it can look like a, a dog-like hair, stringy. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of the Heavenly Father, and that's repeated in Isaiah, and then we see it again in Thessalonians and elsewhere. But this man is set himself up, saying, I'm God, I want you to worship me. Your God looks like me. This man has his own God. No, he's saying, I don't want my God. I want your God, and he looks like me. You must worship me, Luke 12. And five, this man has no fear, but I will, this is red letter, hour shall I speak, and I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, had power to cast in hell. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. I just wanted to read that there, because our power, his only begotten son, is saying, telling you clearly who you ought to fear, and it's certainly not this man, so-called white man, Jacob is the one that's been set up for rulership. He's the one that's been preordained, foreknown. He's the one imbued with the fear of the Most High. Unfortunately, a bunch of our folk who can't wait, they're scheduled to get the same reward as this man. We'll have to see them on the other side. Two out of every three Hebrew Israelites in that land of America is about to be destroyed and they're making themselves known. They don't have the fear that this is speaking about here. You see, so Edom, he's a fool. He's the one who said in his heart, there is no God. I think that's in uh, Psalms 53. And he's repeating Psalm 7. Uh, what am I looking for? Isaiah. Let's get this here. This man can't see, so he's been set up. 54, Isaiah 54 and 16, behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. This smith is a weapons maker, someone who makes weapons. That's what it is. And this takes us all the way back. I mentioned before this name, Cain, Kayan. It's a dagger. What do you call a nomen omen where your name denotes your your characteristics in this particular movie. And his relative, Tubal Cain, is also a murderer. This is a family of lawbreakers. Tubal Cain, if you look him up, you'll see that he was boasting about the murders and the lawlessness that he was committing. These people think they are untouchable. Can't see that they've been set up. He saw Edom. So you go from Quayan to this weapons maker and he saw either his blessing is a sword. It's all a setup. He can't see what's going on. Uh, let's get Isaiah 65, I think. Where am I? 65, 8 and 9. Thus said the Lord, as a new wine is found in the cluster and one said, destroy it not for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sakes that I may not destroy them all. Can anyone be his servant? Let's look at that in a moment. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains and mine elect, a man shall inherit it and my servants shall dwell there. Who can be his servants? Can anyone just be his servants? Let's see. Leviticus 25 and 55, for unto me, the children of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God, Yahweh, your Paul. What's that? Everybody, can anyone, can I make you or make myself a servant? Of course not. You can't do it. The Most High has a people 
is the inconvenient truth. Genesis 27, let's just get 40 and 41. And by thy sword shalt thou live. This is when the blessings have been given out by Isaac here. And this is Esau getting his. By thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Well, this back and forth has been going on. This is prophecy here. And that's how it works. I didn't write it. That's the most high movie. At the moment, this man has got his foot still on our necks. He refuses to let the children of Israel go. The Hebrew Israelites, they're calling us Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and a bunch of other names. We care not for all these stupid names. We are the children of Israel. The 12 tribes who come of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's nothing anyone can do to change this story. Where was I? Verse 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Well, you're not going to get all of us. Let's turn the page back a bit here. Just wanted to a quick point. Genesis 25, 26 and 27. And after that came his brother out as they were being born. They're twins, remember Jacob and Esau. Sure you know the story. And his hand, as Jacob, took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. That's uh, 60. Let's keep it moving here because we're gonna that was repeated here in Hosea. The Bible is repetitive, so we're gonna keep repeating over and over and over. No apologies, Hosea 12. Let's go from three. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with the most high. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. Remember that? I think it's uh Where's that? Genesis, I think it's 32. But Jacob, with that all-night wrestling match where the angel touched him and opened his mind, the pineal touched him, made that new connection, revived him to understand his purpose. And we saw what happened immediately after that. I've you know, touched upon that in various lessons. He took his brother by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with the Most High. Yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him and found him in Bethel. And there he spake with us. Even Yahweh, power of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. That's our power. We've woken back up. He's woken us up. Stirred up our pure mind, Psalms 23, and 4 and 5. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yes, we're leaning on that staff, the staff of truth. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Normally at the table, you expect to eat something nourishing. Well, this food, this truth, against all the lies that's been set before us, it's only his goodness and his mercy why we have found our way through it all. The fog of it's been so dense. The scripture said in his Isaiah 60 or 61 for a few verses there, gross darkness is covered the earth. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head, thy mind with oil, the oil of truth, my Cup, run it over. And yes, we're obsessed. Can't stop, won't stop. Psalms 1186. To begin with, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? We read before, Yahweh said who we should fear. Fear him. He's the one who can doom you to destruction even after your death keep bringing you back in a messed up situation there's no other entity that can do that psalms 118 let's go from 16 the right hand of the lord is exalted the right hand of the lord doeth valiantly i shall not die but live his right hand is yahweh shai and declare the works of the lord 
The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over to death. No, that's preserved for this Edomite. He's the only nation that after a thousand years of hardcore slavery in our kingdom under Jacob, that's what's getting ready to happen. That's what this is all about. He's the one that's going to be rounded up, heaped up, bungled up. Understand that's what this word Gomorrah means, a heap. So he's going to be heaped up, Sodom and Gomorrah style. And burnt. you're never going to have to look at this uh, leprous man. There'll be no one in the earth with those features ever again. That's so, but I... Uh, uh, 18, uh, where am I here? Let's go back to Leviticus. Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26, let's go from seven to nine to begin with. And ye shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. So everything's gonna turn itself around. How can such a small number chase such and can put 10,000 to fly? This is spiritual power he's talking about here. We're going we're gonna to get new bodies, immortal, with this superhuman power, able to do this. Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect, when you look that word up, re meaning back, respect meaning to... Look, I will look back unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. No one else. Let's get this one we often read here. Second Ezra 6, start at 7. Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Verse 8, and he said unto me, is Uriel the angel of the Lord, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Remember, we read that before in Genesis and in Hosea. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Jacob holding on to this man's heel. We're grabbing it now. So he's been laid bare and all of his wickedness, exactly who he is, is being known. All of his crimes right going back to the beginning as in a serpent which was who beguiled Eve. So his crimes and is being listed. The evidence has been brought. It's overwhelming who this man is. If you can't see it, you're not supposed to. Don't worry. We'll see you on the other side. Go back to church. Second Ezra 9. 21. And I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and the plant of a great people. Let's read that again. Second Ezra 9 and verse 21. And I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. And let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. We refer to ourselves as the hopeful elect. We desperately, we're praying, we're begging. Please, please, please. Baba Kusha. Baba Kusha. Baba Kusha, let us be a part. Let's get on to it. Where am I? First Peter. Looking to wrap up here. First Peter uh, 1. Let's get more on this cluster. One to five. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. Who are these strangers? The Hebrew Israelite, Hebrew Israelite foreigners who were scattered to all these places. Listen, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. The elect 
according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience, the sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, you who, the elect, we just said who is speaking about, it's not the whole world. If that's what you think, you're confused. Who are kept by the power of the Most High through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed when in the last time. When is the last time? Now. Happening now, happening now. Let's jump to Verse 18, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Hamashiach. Hamashiach means the anointed one as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest, made known, revealed that which was hidden manifest in these last times. For who? For you. You who? The elect. It's the same people. It's never changed. Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha. That's who it is. Who by him do believe in the Most High that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Oh, I mix up the team. It's the same people. Who the blood the Moses sprinkled the blood. I think it's Exodus 24 on the people. That's the blood of covenant that we enter into. There's nobody else is involved in this thing. Romans 11, 1 and 2, I say then, had the most high cast away his people. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not that the scripture says of Elias, how he maketh intercession to the Most High against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed the prophets and dig down the altars and lamb left alone, and they seek my life. So it goes on to something else. Just wanted to make the point there. And let's jump to five. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Who's doing the electing? Who's done the selection? It's our power who's deciding. It's not me. Verse 7, what then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. What do they seek for? The truth they want to be saved. But the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. That's why they can't get it. It's not for them. Let's get this last few verses here. Matthew 24, 30 and 31. And then, red letter Yahushai speaking, shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. It's Jacob that's been set up to rule. What's that word? Aristocrats best fit to rule. This man, he's surely unfit, the so-called Edomite. Look at the state of the earth. He's telling us the Most High has made a mistake. Oh, he's crazy. There's too many people. So he's getting ready to come down with great wrath. And we can't wait. Jacob is not just being set free. But he's being set up to rule. Shalom until the next lesson. Peace. We don't fear no guy. No, sir.